All right, welcome back to Live Demon Programming. Uh, so up until now, we've done some very basic programming, just kind of getting our feet wet in Unreal Engine, figure out, you know, where things go, you know, what kind of sort of little simple things you can do. Um, in, uh, in this next part, we're going to start getting into a little more significant stuff. And what I want to do is uh, uh, start by showing you uh, some of the some of the things I'm thinking about, and I'm going to do that by demonstrating it in an existing game called Minecraft. Uh, and it's just going to take a few minutes to show you that and show you what it does, and uh, we will uh, we'll we'll get right into this. Um, so let me uh, let me switch over to Minecraft here, and uh, and I'll show it to you. So here we are in. Uh, in a uh, creative world that I have uh, where I experiment with things and I've just set up a little simple situation here with some uh, with some dirt that's ready for planting this is done by hoeing the dirt there has to be a water source nearby or it'll dry out and you can't plant in it and I've got some seeds and uh, I've set uh, a game rule uh, random tick speed I'm gonna set it to three for now and I'm gonna plant some seeds in here okay so we could sit here for a while and watch these grow and what would happen is at random intervals they'll grow up to the next stages of growth uh, but if I uh, come in here and set a game rule random tick speed to about a thousand so this has sped the game up a lot. We'll see now that they are randomly growing at different intervals up into their different stages of growth. Okay, so we've we've created some stuff with tick with controlled tick, and now what we're going to do is create a thing called random tick, which is very similar to this, and we'll be able to update items at random intervals and cause them to do things like this growth. Now, it's going to be a while down the road before we actually start making a plant that can grow, but we can simulate it with, uh, with something other than plants. We can just put some basic models in place and show it changing state at different intervals uh, and so forth. So that's what we're kind of working towards is being able to do things like plant plants and have them grow or have meat decay or other things that could decay over time whatever it may be uh, that, uh, that we need to have a random tick on. So let me uh, switch back over uh, here. Uh, we'll switch back over to the camera for a moment and we'll uh, bring up uh, Unreal Engine and start looking at uh, some of the code that we'll need to do for this. So let's go back to here. So here we are in Unreal Engine, and we have our uh, tick manager actor. So let's uh, let's open that up, uh, and here's the uh, here's the source code for tick manager actor, and we've got this controlled tick event, uh, and we've got this uh, uh, controlled tick uh, virtual function, and in the C++ code, all we did was with tick was we detected an elapsed time. Uh, and we we fire this and so this is firing at irregular intervals okay uh, we've got our uh, random blueprint library here dot h and dot cpp that's got some random uh, capabilities in it a probability check and so forth uh, <clears throat> the random dice roll is good uh, what we're going to start off with here is creating another uh, random function and just let me uh, pull up my notes real quick because uh, I always like to go by go by notes. And uh, we're just going to do this. Uh, it's going to be the same uh, as this. It's going to be static, float, and we're going to call this one <coughs> random range. <coughs> And we're going to give it a uh, float min and a float max value. Okay. And I obviously spelled static wrong because I can't type. There we go. 
So now we will go over to our uh, random uh, library CPP file. And this is a very, very simple one. Uh, let me go back uh, to here and copy this. And we'll put this in, so it's part of this class. So here's our implementation. And all we're going to do is return fmath rand range. It's the same rand range that we used up here. And yes, we could call rand range from anywhere, but we're going to do it from our own library function because we might do something else in the future. And uh, uh, then all we have to do is modify this uh, function and uh, we don't have to modify the rest of our code. So this will return a, a number randomly within the range of min to max uh, inclusive of min and max. And that's it. That's all there is to the random range function. So we've got that. Uh, let's be sure everything is saved. Now, for random tick, if we come over here to our uh, actor, our controlled tick where did I put it? Tick manager actor. That's it. Tick manager actor. Uh, we need to add a, a couple of things in here. So uh, we're going to have some properties now. We're going to have a U property. And we're going to call, we're going to have this be edit anywhere. And we'll make it the category equals settings. And this is going to be a Boolean value called enable random tick. And we're going to set it by default to false. So the, the random tick won't even happen on an object unless this is turned on. And then we have two others. And for this purpose, I'm just going to copy paste. Oops. I'm just going to copy paste these two in the minimum and maximum. And then we're going to have a U function that is our random tick event. And this is a blueprint implementable event. So we won't be implementing this. We'll implement it in blueprint. Uh, if we do need to uh, implement it uh, uh, or have a random tick, uh, yeah, if we need to do it in blueprint, we will override a virtual function called random tick. Okay. And uh, so the only thing that we, so these are uh, that's set to 60 to 600 seconds. One minute to uh, five minutes. Is that five minutes or ten? That's ten minutes. Duh. Six hundred. Sixty times ten. So from one to ten minutes is the default. Uh, and we will, uh, and that's adjustable in the uh, in the blueprint when you make a blueprint from this. So uh, let's go ahead and implement uh, uh, this. Well, we could make, if we made this a virt pure virtual function, we'd have to make this thing... Uh, it would become abstract and we wouldn't be able to implement it directly, uh, which is fine. We could do that, but uh, let's, uh, let's just go ahead and create an implementation of our random tick virtual function um, in here, tickmanager.cpp. So we want to get this. And here's our, uh, uh, we'll just have a, a default function that does nothing. And we've got to put this on there. 
oh another thing that we have uh yeah and we'll for for the moment maybe we'll put a log statement in so we can see something happen but what are we going to do now well up here in tick we've already done it we do this elapsed time is greater than tick time we call the controlled tick method here what we want to say is if and what did I call it exactly? Uh, random enable random tick. If enable random tick, then we're going to do something. Otherwise, we're going to do nothing here. Right? It'll just skip this. So if the random tick is enabled, what we're going to do first of all is oh, I think I missed something. I did. Copy these and go back to the header file. We need uh, a couple more privates down here. Uh, this random tick elapsed time is how much time it's been since the last random tick occurred. And this float is when the next random tick should take place. So uh, actually we need to go to our, uh, yes, okay. So let's go back to our here. So here we are in our enabled random tick. All right, so the first thing we want to do is check to see if the next random tick equals equals 0, 0.0 F. Uh, if it does, then it has not been initialized. And so we're going to say next random tick equals U randomizer, U randomizer blueprint library. And I think my problem here, why it isn't picking it up, is I didn't include the header file. Yes, that's probably it. So let's go up here and put the randomizer blueprint header library in. And we can go randomize you. We can go it's... U randomizer blueprint library colon colon random range random tick random random tick minimum random tick maximum yeah random tick minimum random tick maximum and so we'll just pop these in for some reason, IntelliSense just has a tough time with, uh, with C++. So we'll just pop these in there. And I'll pull this down a line so it's a little easier to see. So that's, uh, so we've got our next random tick. Then what we want to do is go random tick elapsed time plus equals delta time. So we, we've come into a new real tick, actual system tick. Want to add the current delta time, how much time is lapsed to the random tick elapsed time. And then check to see if the random tick elapsed time is greater than or equal to the next random tick. And if it is, we're going to call that virtual function random tick. And we're going to pass in the random tick elapsed time, not the delta time. We want to know how long it's, we want to be able to tell it how long has happened since the last random tick came in, which is in, in real time seconds. And then we want to set the random tick elapsed time to zero and then we want to set the next random tick equal to this and get a new random tick value a new so when the next one is going to be is now another random value so we randomize it the first time it passes through and it says okay and we could do this up in the constructor, I guess. We could set this first one, which would probably be better uh, rather than doing this. Uh, 
Let's do that. Let's move this up to the constructor. So that it sets the initial random tick. It doesn't matter uh, that it's doing this. In fact, we should surround with this with if random tick if enable. random tick we'll put this in here and we can get rid of this and I'm not sure why it isn't seeing enable random tick properly I guess it is I guess it is seeing it okay Enable random tick. So if our random tick is enabled on this on any particular instance of this, then this is going to get called. We'll add the uh, delta time to the random tick elapsed time. If it's greater than the next random tick, which was randomly set, we will call this random tick virtual function. Uh, and we can override that. And the random tick uh, virtual function uh, uh, is what's going to call the blueprint uh, implementable function as well. So all we have to do from here, and then it sets the next random tick. So we get random varying ticks at different times within our range of controlled, in a, within our controlled range. So all we have to do in random tick is call the random tick event with this delta time which is the time that was passed in which is actually the time since the last one so uh, we can save all that and go back to uh, go back to Unreal Engine and we will compile and hopefully I did everything right and we don't get any errors <laughs> that's so unlikely <laughs> uh. And it shouldn't take too long to compile. It's taking a while, which means it's probably already passed my code and it's doing something in, uh, deeper in the engine at the moment. Maybe. Maybe it'll pass. Usually if it fails, it fails pretty quickly on these. Unless it's just slow for some reason. I'll pause the video and come back when it's done compiling. And of course it failed, so let's take a look at the log here and see error you randomize blueprint library. <clears throat> okay, let's look at that again. What did it say? I'm sorry, I know that this window's a little, probably a little hard to see in the video. I cannot access private member. Oh, okay. Did I make a mistake here? Um, random library H. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, let's try to compile that again. <laughs> I hope it doesn't take quite so long this time. <clears throat> I will pause the video and come back when it fails. Yeah, I'll come back when it fails. If, if it succeeds, I'm not coming back. Just kidding. Uh, that actually only took a few seconds. Uh, so it compiled complete, and that worked. Okay, so we've got our Tick Manager actor. Uh, let's uh, create a blueprint class based on this. And uh, I don't know, this is just an experiment. So I'm just going to throw this in actors, and I'll call it my Tick Manager actor in actors. And we'll pull this over here. 
So here it is, and here's the event graph. And we don't need any of this stuff. Ah, darn it. We don't need any of this stuff. Let's delete that. Um, let's see what we can do. We've already got a static, one static mesh component, and that's the one that's going to show. Um, what we could do here is we could add... Um, Let's add some variables. Let's uh, add a variable called growth stage. And let's make it an integer. And we'll compile. And that's defaulted to zero. So growth stage zero. Okay. So <clears throat> let's just, uh, well, we'll just do this very simply. Let's go uh, random tick event. So let me expand this. Here's our random tick event. This is the C++ event that we created on our actor. Uh, we get uh, a random tick at some, some amount. So we need to go here to uh, uh, class defaults and there should be a section called settings and there is and we have so we need to, first of all, enable random tick. Uh, and let's make it like 3 to 10 seconds. Uh, it's going to give out this random tick. And so let's just do a simple print string on the random tick and plug the delta time in there. Just have it print something out. And compile that, save it. <clears throat> go back to our scene and just uh, for starters we'll just take this my tick manager actor drop it in here and hit play and um, okay so I think this is the same thing I ran into before I've already got something in the scene that's printing something out I do it's that and where's the my tick manager actor? I should have given it something. There it is. Let me pull it up a little bit. And so we can see it. Ah. Okay, what's what's wrong? Why can't I move? What? Why can't I move it? I don't get this. I'm going to delete this. There. I'm going to open this back up. I'm going to give this something. Uh, we'll give it a... Uh, uh, not that. We want to go to the static mesh component. And let's make it a one meter cube compile okay we get up off the floor here so I can see what's going on and we'll take this and we'll drop it into the scene and raise it up a little bit and we'll hit play and we should start getting uh, am I gonna crash oh didn't crash okay Lighting needs to be rebuilt. Okay, great. So there it is. It printed out after five seconds, but I see another little problem I'm going to fix real quick here. Let's go back to this. Let's go pull this down, and let's just set this duration to zero so they just stay on the screen. Ah, come on. Zero. Okay. Compile. Save. Hit save all. And then let's make this screen a little bit bigger for you. In fact, what I can do is pop this out uh, to a uh, new editor window. And we'll just pull it over here. That way I can do this, make it big. And we can see what's going on. So three to five seconds here. It should print something out. Really? Not going to print anything out? What did I do wrong now? Blueprint. 
three to ten seconds duration. Well, let's let it last a minute. Maybe it didn't like that zero for some reason. Always oh, before when you set it to zero, it meant uh, okay. Here it's printing out. Print it out fairly quick. there again so we're getting our random ticks at random tick intervals that one fairly quick i think we're passing in the wrong delta to oh no that was nine seconds okay oh i see yeah 9.7 okay i always forget that it prints it at the top and pushes everything down so that's working it's printing out at that random interval between that range of 3 to 10 seconds. Uh, and now what we could do is uh, this random tick could uh, print out, say, the growth stage instead of the time. Uh, let's uh, this off of there. Let's get the growth stage. Let's print the growth stage. And then let's increment the growth stage. Uh, increment and what we want to increment is the growth stage and so compile play so it's at zero initially then it's at one at two and if we decided that at a certain growth stage it's done then it simply we could stop it from incrementing the growth stage any further so that's all it would take to set that up. You could have different models in here. You could have uh, variables that display them. Or we could have, you know, uh, the stage one mesh. And we could set this to uh, a type of static mesh. and so forth we could have a stage two mesh or we could make this uh, uh we could instead let's make this uh stage meshes and pull this down here and make it an array compile it now we could come down here and add however many stages of meshes we wanted in here and we could apply the appropriate static mesh merge meshes populate uh, static mesh did I choose the wrong type here static mesh oh I went static mesh settings I want static mesh and I want it to be a yeah I want it to be an object met array compile this Ah, I crashed. I'll be right back once I reload it. Okay, we are back. Uh, let's just go back to that. Um, this guy here. Pull it over here. Um, yeah, I lost all that. So we can add a variable. We'll call this uh, stage meshes and we could do this in C++ as well uh, what we want here is a static mesh what we want is a static mesh object reference as an array and then we hit compile and save and then if we hit plus, there we go. We can add some static meshes. So we could add uh, the first person projectile meshes, stage one. And stage two could be a uh, one meter cube chancer. And then, and then stage three will make it a one meter cube. And then what we can do here, we have this static mesh component. So let's say uh let's get rid of the print string we've got our event 
let's do uh, on uh, begin play. Let's take this and do a set mesh. Set static mesh. And what we will set it to is this. We'll do a get zero and we will on begin play set it to zero. So let's see if that worked when we play. Yes, it's the, the zero position. So on our random tick, let's double check that we got all our settings right. Yeah. So on our random tick, when we get a random tick in, let's take our growth stage uh, and increment it. And then actually let's drop this into here so that it gets it from the growth stage on begin play we'll call that but we'll also call this from here ah come on and this is kind of sloppy it's just for demonstration we would set this up as functions and we would do this in a more appropriate way but let's uh let's save everything so we don't lose anything this time if we crash and we should be able to play now and wait an appropriate amount of time. Uh, we want to check. We will get a crash if, we, if we're not careful here. Um, plus plus growth stage. we have to set the growth stage then we want to do a branch and if growth stage is greater than length of this if that's true we want to set the growth stage back to zero and then call this otherwise we just want to call this so let's move this down here. <laughs> kind of sloppy, but it should work. <laughs> save. Save all. Save selected. And let's see if four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How come it's not changing? Let's look at the blueprint. I'm going to move this out of the way. Our, doesn't look like our random tick event is firing. Event. Random tick event. Calling set static mesh ah so we're getting some errors here calling set static mesh on but mobility is static ah
Okay, it switched it and it switched it again. <laughs> and it disappeared. Set. Interesting. I wonder why it didn't switch it around and why it went so fast by it. Oh, I hope you can hear me okay. I think I was fading there. I was moving away from my microphone. I'm trying to lean forward and look at the screen more closely. Well, anyway, <laughs> I will see if I can figure the better way of doing this to demonstrate it. I thought I would just demonstrate how we could change models out and make it uh, make the tick function work, but... Uh, the tick function is essentially working, and that's what's important here. We'll work on models and switching them out uh, in an upcoming video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, hit that like button. If you really liked it, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.